Before we get into this episode, I want to invite you to join a community of faith-based storytellers. Yes, Faith Audio Network. Now, Faith Audio Network is our online community designed to sharpen and encourage faith-based storytellers to use their voice and overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So if you know that God is calling you to speak up, if you know that in this season, God is telling you to use your voice, whether that be on stages or launching a podcast or being a guest on podcast or even doing an audio book or some type of audio experience, then I want to invite you to join this community. Faith Audio Network is now open for all faith-based storytellers to join. So if you know that you have a story to tell and you are ready to sharpen your faith with other Christians who are also speaking about the Lord boldly and confidently, this is your opportunity. To learn more, please visit faithaudionetwork.com. That's faithaudionetwork.com. Hello, my love, and welcome to another episode of the Faith-Based Storyteller Show, where we sharpen and encourage one another in Christ. I'm your host, Michaela Robertson, and thank you so much for joining me for another day, another week, and another opportunity for us to walk in the Lord's will for our lives. Now, today's episode is a little personal because I want to share what's been going on in life. Now, usually on a Friday, I would bring you guys a Bible study episode, but I wanted to give you guys a life update and really just encourage you in this episode because, you know, faith-based storyteller, we sharpen and encourage one another in Christ. And so today I want to talk about gratitude and remembrance. Now, when it comes to anything in life, and actually, let me just, let me preface this with a story. A few weeks ago, I was on a call with my ladies, my accountability group, and we were talking about how to exercise your faith and how when you're in uncertain situations or you're in, you know, new seasons, how do you know or how can you really have that that certainty that what you step out in in faith is going to come to pass? And as I was having this conversation with the ladies, it was so amazing because one of the ladies asked me, how is it that you can always have so much faith or how do you know that it's going to work out and I remember telling her like my exact words were gratitude and remembrance because if I can find something to be grateful for every single day if I can count my blessings then I know that God is always with me. And honestly, it's not just about the blessings. Like I'm not just looking at just the blessings, but everything that I look at my life, like everything, when I look around, everything that I see in my life is a blessing. The fact that I was able to wake up this morning, that is a blessing. The fact that I have breath in my body, that is a blessing. The fact that I have running water and a place over my head to call home, like shelter, that is a blessing. Like when I'm in the shower and the soap smells good, that is a blessing. You know, when you can walk out of your your bathroom and the heat is on, that is a blessing. Like to have running water, that is a blessing. And so it's not just about, oh, God gave me this and so I'm grateful. No, it's about everything that I have is because of God. And that is the level of gratitude and the stature and posture of gratitude that I always want to be in. And so when I say gratitude and remembrance, I'm meaning count every single blessing every day. And that is how I'm able to truly continuously exercise my faith. And when it comes to remembrance, it's looking back at all the times that God did help me. Now, you guys know my story. And if you don't, welcome to the podcast. I'm Michaela. But I've told my story quite a few times on this podcast on how the Lord gave me the revelation where he literally said he will help me. And when I look back, I have to remember all of the times that he helped me. Of course, one of the obvious ways was when he helped me with the death of my father. And he helped me through that 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 time where there was much more grief surrounding me, but he gave me a peace that truly surpassed understanding. Another time he helped me was back in college when I would pray for outrageous things and they would actually come to pass. Like I remember praying that I would (laughs) go to South Africa on a study abroad trip a year before it happened, just because I attended one informational meeting. And I said, I'm going to be on that trip. And I prayed and I told everyone, Hey, next summer, (laughs) 
you won't see me. I will not be here. I'm going to be on that trip. (laughs) And literally, I did not have the money. I did not have the finances. But prior to that trip, the Lord provided all of it. And I was able to literally go to South Africa and spend my summer there. Or when I was a kid and I used to pray that the Lord would continue my my dreams and I would literally dream movies. You guys, I would go to sleep and wake up and the next day. It would be the exact same place where my dream left off before. Or I would pray that we could get a dog and years later, my parents got a dog or my prayer. One of the you know, you guys know the top three prayers that I would be Michaela Denise Robertson, that I would have twins and that I would have a talk show. And so lo and behold, when I met my husband, Duran Robertson, in elementary school, I had no idea that the the husband that I was praying for would be the man that I had already known, the boy that I had grown up with, you know? And when I got married to him, the Lord said, remember what else you prayed for? Remember what you asked me for? And I feel like remembrance is so key and so powerful to exercising our faith. Because when we don't have what it is that we desire in the moment, it can be so hard to think that God is going to provide. Just, you know, when, when your circumstances don't line up with what you see, I understand that it can be hard to see that God is going to come through, that he's going to help you. But that is where you lean on the past. That is where you lean on the memories. That is where you bring up and remember all that he has done for you all that he has helped you through within your life. And so I'm so grateful for gratitude because it gives me a way to remember. It gives me a reason to remember. It also gives me the the practice and the routine that I need to stay in remembrance, you know, counting your blessings every day. And then also remembering what God has gifted you with, remembering what he told you, remembering the promises that are literally in his Bible That is something even more powerful to lean on because you you can have faith in knowing that what you do not see is going to come to pass. And you are certain of it because God had told you that. And so that is why that is some one of the things I wanted to talk about today, the power of gratitude and remembrance. And when it comes to counting your blessings, I want to tell you guys a story. And I say all this to say I'm in this season of my life where the Lord is transitioning me. He is removing some things that I've that I've done in the past, not necessarily bad, but just making new ways. And I know that the scripture says that God is doing a new thing. He will make rivers in the wilderness or ways or ways in the wilderness and rivers in the deserts. Have you not seen it yet? And when you do not know how the Lord is going to make that way, it is hard to see the way that he's going to make. And so this is kind of the season of my life, especially when it comes to my business. I don't know if the Lord is saying, go back to another job, or if he's saying, hey, I want you to rebuild this business, but from a different lens, at least I did not know. Now I do know. And I tell you this story because in the process of waiting, in the process of exercising my faith, I just decided Technically, I was encouraged to decide by my husband. I was encouraged to stick my head in the door. Whatever doors the Lord opens, stick my head in the door. That doesn't mean you walk in fully. That doesn't mean that door is going to be the answer to everything. That doesn't even mean that that may be the door that you're supposed to walk into. But just stick your head in the door. That's my husband always tells me. Just stick your head in the door. And so you guys know that my word for this year is breakthrough and open doors. We did an episode on that. And when it comes to sticking your head in the door, that means allowing every opportunity to be a possibility, allowing every opportunity to be a possibility. So when I see a job online that resonates, I stick my head in the door. I put in an application. When I see someone reaching out for services, I stick my head in the door. I give them my service list. When I meet different people, new people every single week on the street or in my building or in the city when I'm out for a walk and we start sparking conversation, I never know who has the power to add value to my life, but I also don't know whose life I can also add value to. So you stick your head in the door. You have the conversation. You see how you can serve. You see how you can add value. And this week I had an interview, a job interview. Now I haven't gone on a job interview, y'all, since 2019. So it's been a good, been a good five years since I actually went to an interview. And it's been a good four years since I actually worked a full-time job. And 
I'm going to walk you through these emotions. Emotion one. You know what? This job could be a blessing. This could be really great. It could help my family a lot. Emotion two. If I go back to a nine to five, I'm going to be a slave. I will not be able to know when I'm when I have time off. I'm going to have to actually put in time to get requests off. I'm going to have to answer to somebody. I'm going to have to show up at this time. I'm going to have 40 hours a week. I'm going to lose all my free time. I don't like this. Emotion three. But, you know, if I'm surrendered to the Lord and the Lord has this job as an opportunity for me, this could be. It could be great. You know, I could be able to serve in the capacity when I did work a full time job. I always got promoted. So there would be there was room for promotion. There's room for growth. You know, when you show up and serve others, it's a blessing to the Lord. So this could be great. Emotion four. But the Lord has also blessed you to work from home. And when you were working a nine to five, sis, you were working 80 hours a week and you were exhausted and burnt out and you prayed for deliverance and now God gave you deliverance. So you're like one of the Israelites going back to a job. And I don't think that's what the Lord wants because he wants to take you to the promised land and not back to that. (laughs) And then emotion five. Well, you know, if I stick my head in the door, you never know. Like I might be able to do both. I might be able to balance a full time job and still do all of the gifts and and all of the visions and the business plans that God has given me when it comes to ministry. I think I could balance both. And of course, it just goes back and forth. It's like the angel on one shoulder and the other bad angel on the other shoulder, like the conscious angel. I'm not going to say the devil, but the conscious angel on the other shoulder And that was how I looked at going back to a job. But like I said, I stuck my head in the door. And when I stuck my head in the door, initially, I was like, nah. (laughs) And then that same company kept popping up. And so I applied to a company that was a Christian company. And it looked like it was a great opportunity. They had two jobs that aligned with my skill set. I went to the first interview. It was a great first interview. I got ex- I got invited back for a second interview. And this week, I went in for my second interview. Now, the young lady who interviewed me during my first interview was not able to make it. So I was sitting across the table from basically four strangers, but they were really amazing people. And they were telling me about their company. And they were telling me about each position and how You know, this is not necessarily a startup, but they are a small but mighty team and they're looking to accomplish this really great vision. And they were explaining their vision to me and they were explaining their religious values to me and they were explaining the core of the company and what they're looking to achieve. And I saw the whole strategy. I saw the strategy for how they could build out that company. I saw how they could repurpose their content and spread it across the board. I saw how it could be truly a blessing for everyone within their sphere but you know what I also saw I saw how much of a learning curve it would be for me to learn their voice in order to properly tell their story I saw how it would be a longer commute than expected when it comes to showing up every day which would definitely cut into your energy if you think about how much time is in a day I also saw how far away it was from my home I saw how the, and this really doesn't matter to me, but I saw how the salary wouldn't necessarily cover my finances. And so I would need to go out and get another job or I would need to be able to focus on the business part time in order to substantiate the finances that we, we wouldn't be able to help or be able to provide the bills we wouldn't be able to pay. And I also saw how passionate they were and how there wasn't that same spark in my heart. And y'all, I have never done this. And I never thought I would have the confidence to ever do this. But I sat across that table from them and I asked them how the interview went and they gave me constructive feedback because I'm very honest. I wanna know how it went. I haven't been in an interview in like four years and I told them that too. And then I told them, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would like to decline from moving forward. This is not to say that you are going to offer me the job, but even if you were going to extend the invitation for a third interview, I would like to respectfully decline. And these people sat across that table and every single one of their faces was in shock. And honestly, I was like, what in the world did I just do? (laughs) 
did I literally just say that? And one of the gentlemen asked, why? And I told him, the learning curve is definitely too steep for me. I would have to to truly tell their, their story and to truly help them the way that I want to help them, the way that they have the vision for the help that they need. It would require outside learning just for me to understand the bulk of this business to be able to speak the same language. And so when I come in, I want to be able to immediately, not not immediately execute like I know what I'm doing and I know everything, but I want to be able to come in with the strengths and knowledge to be able to assist and not not be more of a liability than an asset in that way. And I explained that, you know, the salary, unfortunately, wouldn't be able to meet my household's needs. And I also explained that they're all so passionate. And I know that if I go back to another full-time job, I want to have that same level of passion that they have for this company. I want to be able to know in the heart of my hearts that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be and that the Lord has placed me to help build this vision. And they were like, I respect that. And thank you so much. And they said, if I ever need any resources that they can provide to reach out. And I offered the exact same hospitality and humbleness to know that if I can be an asset to your team, I would love to help. But unfortunately, this job position isn't for me. And I told them that I would go and I would actually pray that the Lord send them the people that they need for this position. And I did. And when I look at this week in general, this week, you guys, was such a blessed week. And I actually made a list and counted my blessings. Now, I posted this on social media. So if you read my socials or if you follow me on social, you may be seeing I'm repeating what I'm saying. So I posted the blessings this week on social media. Blessing number one. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys this story, but I'm going to say this. The first blessing, you know this. I attended a job interview and I had the confidence and peace to decline from the position once I realized it wasn't in alignment. And on top of that, as soon as I was in the Uber ride home, I had so much peace. And I just remember smiling out the window like, God, thank you. Thank you for showing me where I'm not supposed to be because it confirms where I am supposed to be. And when I look at other blessings this week, as I was working on uh, the actual skills test assignment for this full-time job, I was sitting at a desk in my building and I decided that I was going to just post on Facebook. I had joined this Christian podcast group a few weeks or months back and You know, when you join a group and you're not really active, but you figure, you know, I might as well just join because we all do the same things. That was me. So I joined this group and I was like, Lord, I'm going to pitch to see if anyone wants to be a guest on my podcast. And, you know, whoever you bring, that'd be great. And I opened up like 18 slots on my calendar for the month of February. And I was like, you know, three, four guests, that'd be amazing. And within a few hours, less than five, all 18 slots were filled. And on top of that, There are 30 more forms as of right now because they just keep coming in. (laughs) There are 30 more forms in my inbox of people who are like, hey, I know your slots are filled, but when you open them up, I'm ready to be on the show. And I thought that that was such a blessing. Now, I did not expect those 18 slots to fill up so fast. And I only put those 18 slots in this week alone because I didn't know if next week I'd be at a full time job. And so I've had interviews back to back to back (laughs) for the last few days. And I mean, I'm talking like four to six interviews a day. And I've already recorded nine of those 18. And I've had the most amazing conversations with some of the most amazing faith-based storytellers I have ever met. And these are literally divine appointments, y'all. Like the Lord has placed these people in my life for a reason. Now, I don't know what we're going to work together or how we're going to work together in the near future. But I know that every single person that I've interviewed so far has not only poured into me, but spoken a word over my life that the Lord confirmed in the bigger vision that he revealed to me regarding my business. So in the process of sticking my head in the door and seeing what was for me in all aspects of that phrase, like in finding an actual full time job and looking at my business and how I'm how I'm supposed to be a wife and looking at my home. The Lord opened up so many other doors and I realized which doors I wanted to stick my foot into and actually walk into versus just peek. And so I had these interviews, nine out of the 18 I recorded. 
I had a young lady reach out to me and she said, I just want to learn whatever you're doing. I just want to learn. And so we had our first agency meeting with my new intern and it was phenomenal. And I showed her how we were going to execute on this vision that God gave us. And she's so excited. Praise the Lord. My mom lives about two hours from me. And a few weeks ago, she came down and we went on a walk and she was like, hey, let's let's turn this into a jog. So we went on a jog and then she's like, let's do let's do a run. So we went on a run. And if you guys don't know, I've ran track my whole life. My mom has always been my coach. My mom is big into fitness and athletics and she runs a lot of marathons. And so, you know, she put me in a interesting situation and wore me out <laughs> during that time. And she was like, all right, save time next week. <laughs> So now she comes down every week and once a week we have our mommy daughter time and we actually just work out, whether that be running outside or working out in the gym. And we did a whole full body workout this week and I survived. I don't know how this woman does this in her 50s, 60s, and I am so out of shape, but I am learning. I am building and I know that in order for me to be a mother one day, my body needs to be strong enough to carry my children. So that was a blessing. I was able to cook dinner this week, three out of five of the days. That's a win for me because we eat out a lot. And I feel like I never have time to cook and I want to cook. But like the Lord gave me time, even though this was one of the busiest weeks, I still had enough time to cook. And they were amazing meals. And my husband was very excited. OK, like that is a blessing. My husband and I had a beautiful marriage meeting where we poured our our hearts and we looked at the vision for the year and what we're looking for that is a blessing and on top of that like I said the Lord restored an old dream and one of the things that I initially started this business on he's bringing back and so I'm excited about that and so I also had a meeting with the ladies in Faith Audio Network how it was a paid membership first. And when I first launched it, there was a course and it was like $27 a month. And, you know, we were building together and we had our last meeting before I opened up the doors to make this a free community. And the ladies gave me so much insight onto how they feel and how much they've grown and how much more they want to grow. Now there's a new venture involved in Faith Audio Network. And I can't wait to share with you. I can't wait to explain more to you. But I say all this to say, when it comes to building your faith, I believe it's so important to have gratitude and remembrance. We need to be grateful for everything that God is placing in our lives. We need to count our blessings one by one every single day and be just be grateful. And then on top of that, we need to remember. We need to remember what he did. We need to remember how he helped us. We need to remember what he said. We need to remember what his word says. And that is how we're going to build up our faith each and every day. That's how we're going to exercise our faith when we are in seasons where we don't know what's coming next. Because honestly, y'all, I really don't know what's coming next, but I know that whatever is coming next is going to be according to God's will, his plan, and it is going to prosper me and have plans that not only help my future, but my the generations that are going to come after me. And I know that God's going to position me to where I can be the best version that he has created me to be. And so I leave you guys with this. My prayer right now in this season of life is God, please help me to use my skills, my time, my resources, and my relationships to steward them with wisdom for your glory and for your kingdom. So if you are looking to build up your faith. If you are looking to just really allow the Lord to use you, then I extend this prayer to you. Lord, give me the wisdom to help me steward my time, my gifts, my resources, and my relationships with wisdom for your kingdom and for your glory. Now that concludes today's episode of Faith Audio or Faith Audio Network. (laughs) That concludes today's episode of the Faith-Based Storyteller Show. I love you guys. And remember, God loves you always. So just continue to place your faith in him and turn to him when you are in need because he is going to help us. We just got to remember that he always will be there. He'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. But anywho, that concludes this episode and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.